Hey guys, it's Protendo, and I don't think it's a secret that Animal Crossing New Horizons has a lot of elements that are controversial. Of course, that doesn't take away from the fact that the game is still loved by millions today, but the game has a lot of features, or rather lacks a lot of features, that fans aren't really all that happy about. And one of those things is the game's laughable amount of shops. In Animal Crossing, shops and buildings are kind of a big deal. Well, to say kinda is really underselling it, they're a huge deal. Getting new shops or upgrading old ones was a major source of motivation in past Animal Crossing games and played a major part in the game's excellent progression systems. I mean, take a look at New Leaf for instance. Nookling Junction, TNT Mart, Super TNT, TIY, TNT Emporium, The Able Sisters, Shampoodle, Kix, The Garden Shop, The Dream Suite, The Roost, and that's just a portion of the game's massive amount of upgrades and buildings. New Horizons, on the other hand, really falls flat in this regard. All we have is Nook's Cranny and the Able Sisters, the former only having a single upgrade that can be achieved in a month's time. I guess you can stretch it to include Traveling Salesman if you want to stretch it to occasional shops as well, but even then, the fact that 5 is the absolute maximum is, to put it bluntly, a joke. But what's the point of complaining without providing a solution, right? While I have a video coming out in the future that will go into heavy detail about how I think New Horizons could include more shops and buildings, new and old, today I'll be talking about how I would upgrade every single building in New Horizons, and what said upgrades would entail. So with that out of the way, let's get started with the building that needs an upgrade more than any other, Nook's Cranny. Now, you might be surprised to hear me say that, considering the fact that the Cranny is the only building that actually has an upgrade that feels like an actual upgrade from previous games. But that upgrade doesn't make shopping there any less egregious. I already lamented about how badly New Horizons handles items and furniture in my review a few months back, so I'm not going to go on to another long tangent here, but to summarize, why do you have to wait for certain versions of the items instead of being able to customize them yourself, and if that's going to be the case, then why are there only 5 furniture slots? Nook and Go, the new upgrade, would aim to fix a lot of these issues. The requirements to open it up will be as follows. It has to have been 2 months since the opening of the upgrade in Nook's Cranny, 600,000 bells worth of items have to have been bought or sold in the store, 20,000 bells have to have been spent at Leaf's garden stand, and 50 softwood, 50 hardwood, 50 stone, and 30 iron nuggets have to be given to Timmy and Tommy. Leaf's next visit to your island will see him ask you if he could set up shop on the island permanently. Talking to Tom Nook about it after will have him suggest moving him into Timmy and Tommy's store, to which they'll obviously agree. A couple of days of construction later, and boom, new upgrade. Nook and Go in design would look very similar to the current Cranny upgrade. I don't think the supermarket-esque style would work very well with the island setting. However, the building would extend outward slightly more, and the platform underneath the store would be gone in order to make it clear that it's been upgraded. Inside, things would be very different and much bigger. While most of the store would still be dedicated to the Nooklings, featuring double the furniture available in the prior upgrade, the bottom right corner would belong to Leaf and his wares, giving the player daily access to plants and shrubs. This takes heavy inspiration from TNT Emporium in New Leaf, though this upgrade would still only be one floor. Next up, we've got the Able Sisters, and I think it would be nice to see them get a similar upgrade to the Cranny, allowing them to expand and get an additional character in the store. I know a lot of people would want to see Label move back in, but honestly, I kind of like the evolution her character has seen, rekindling her relationship with her sisters while still being adventurous and chasing her dreams. Plus, she doesn't provide that much of a use in New Horizons anyways. So instead, I think it makes perfect sense for Kix to be the one included in their next upgrade, as similarly to Leaf, he provides a service that would work much better as a daily seller, just like he was in New Leaf. The Able Sisters upgrade wouldn't require materials like the Cranny, and instead would solely depend on how much money you've spent in the store. 100,000 bells at the Able Sisters and 20,000 bells with kicks, plus a time period of at least 30 days since the store was built, and you're on your way to an upgraded tailor. The inside of the store would be similar to the New Leaf design, but with an expanded main area for holding more clothes. However, the side room where you used to find Label would instead belong to Kix and have a selection of socks and shoes that rotates every day. I feel like these two upgrades specifically are the most important of the bunch, because not only do they help the game's poorly executed progression system tremendously, but they also help fix some of New Horizons' little annoyances, like not having permanent access to shrubs and shoes. Up next is the airport, and I have just one request. Bring back the pelicans. 
After flying to 20 mystery islands and mailing 20 letters, the airport would be upgraded to replace this stupid annoying little card stand that I hate with the actual characters of Peli and Phyllis, filling the exact same roles that they did in the previous games as the postal service people. However, to make this upgrade actually provide some sort of new feature, Peli and Phyllis present a new way to send mail, the pen pal system. Using this system, you would be able to send letters to animals who had moved out of your town, keeping in touch long after they pack up and leave. I think something like this would go a long way in terms of making New Horizons robotic villagers feel more like actual people with personalities again. Following the airport, we've got a building that isn't actually a building, but I'm giving it an upgrade anyway. The campsite. As it currently is, the campsite is actually fine. I think it's the only building in New Horizons that I have no issues with whatsoever. I mean, the only thing that kind of bothers me is that it doesn't turn into an igloo in the winter anymore, but that's more of a nitpick if anything. But with a new upgrade, I think things could get even better. After visiting 20 animals in the campsite and achieving a 4 star island rating, you would be able to upgrade the campsite to a lodge. Inside would be 3 different rooms, all of which might hold an animal on any day of the week, maybe even multiple at the same time. And as for who could run this building, I think Porter would be the perfect choice. He's always had this sort of orderly look to him and I think this would be a fun way to bring him back in New Horizons. He could even have a new hotel staff look to him, I think that would be nice. Next up, we've got the museum. A lot of people think that Brewster's Cafe is the most obvious addition to the museum, but personally, I much preferred him having his own building in New Leaf. It felt like an evolution of his character to see how far he'd come with his business, being able to open up a coffee shop independent of Blathers. I feel like it would be a bit of a step back to have him move back into the cramped confines of the museum when there's so much potential with what his standalone shop could look like. So, with that said, what should the museum's next upgrade include? Well, I think two new exhibits would suffice. The plant exhibit and the gyroid exhibit. After donating at least 90 creatures, fossils, or pieces of art, these exhibits would simultaneously open up. The plant exhibit would obviously work better if Nintendo actually decided to add more flowers, shrubs, fruits, and vegetables to the game, but I think it would be really cool to see all of New Horizons plant life categorized and documented in the museum. It could have a really gorgeous exhibit too, not unlike the bug exhibit that we currently have that's just filled to the brim with nature and beauty. The second exhibit, the gyroid one, is completely reliant on whether or not Nintendo will actually add these iconic little guys to the game, but I think it would be cool to have them placed in an actual exhibit. To enter a room and be greeted with all of their wacky sounds and movements would be as fun as it is creepy. And finally, the last building in New Horizons because I'm not counting Harv's. Residence Services. Resident Services is essentially the game's base of operations, giving you access to major construction projects and changes to your island. So naturally, an upgrade to the building would only give you more access to major changes, right? After playing for at least 60 days and achieving a 5 star island rating, Resident Services would be upgraded to feature two new characters, Digby and Lyle. Fans of past games will know these two as members of the Happy Home Academy, but in New Horizons, they'd play a larger role in construction. Sitting at desks behind Tom Nook and Isabel, Digby and Lyle would each give access to major changes to your island. Digby would provide the feature of Island Expansion. For a very hefty fee of 500,000 bells, the player would be given the option to expand their island to the north, east, or west, giving them more land to build and explore. Lyle, on the other hand, provides a near opposite service, presenting the ability to completely flatten a piece of land. For a fee of 200,000 bells, Lyle would allow you to select a portion of your island to have reset. Any houses or buildings would have to be moved by your hand, but once you do, any trees, rivers, flowers, or rocks, or anything else that might take up pieces of land that you selected, would be completely destroyed, giving the player a blank slate in which to terraform. These features aren't something that I personally would use extensively, but I know that the designing part of the Animal Crossing community would find these immensely helpful. But anyways guys, that's about it for this video. As always, I'd love to hear what you think. Are these good ideas for upgrades in Animal Crossing New Horizons? And what ideas do you have for upgrades that we might see in the future? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you all later. Protendo, out.